シリーズポストコロナ世界における分断と交流外国人研究者が見たコロナ禍の日本こんにちはナビゲーターのサヘルローズですこのシリーズでは日本に関する研究を行う外国人研究者の皆様をゲストにお迎えいたしましてコロナ禍という大きな変化の中で日本社会はどのようなことを学んでいくのかまたこの経験がどんな意味を持っていくのか専門分野からのご意見伺っていきたいと思いますお話を伺う研究者の皆さんは国際交流基金が毎年世界中からお呼びしている日本研究フェローの方々です今回のスピーカーはこの方です写真家としても活動しながら東京とパリ2つのオリンピックの開催都市の比較研究を行うルイズ・クレア・ワグナーさんです Hi, my name is Louise Claire Wagner I'm a researcher in urban studies and photographer So Louise, what was it like to go through the pandemic while you were in Tokyo, both personally and professionally?、Um, I believe, as many for us, it was, especially in the beginning, very disconcerting.、Um, at first, I struggled with the fact that、um, many cultural and social events got widely cancelled,、um, that my, I could not continue my research as planned, and that like, suddenly、um, futures Um, seemed very uncertain.、Um, so my life seemed somehow put on hold, but at the same time, everything seemed accelerated. And when, when diverse facilities started to close, I felt really anxious.、Um, so I, started, I tried to go to the bottom、um, of that、um, anxiety, and I quickly realized that actually I was in a very privileged situation that closed libraries did not hinder me from reading. And that、um, closed sporting facilities did not mean that I could not do、um, physical exercises, for example. So I started to、um, go almost every morning、um, for walks or runs. And as I live close by, they kind of guided me instinctively or purposely, half, I think,、um, next to the national, Japan National Stadium. And that became a very important、um, source of inspiration. Um, in my daily life. It also helped me to kind of go back to basics、um, of my research.、Um, because, so professionally speaking, it was above all very confusing.、Um, besides almost all meetings, interviews,、um, and academic activities being cancelled,、um, there was this undeniable fact that the core piece of my research. Um, got impacted by the pandemic as it led to the postponement of the 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. How do you think the pandemic will affect Japanese people and society in the long run?、Um, I think it may guide people to more individuality or more flexibility, especially in terms of work forms.、Um, It's difficult to, to reply to this question in a generally、um, appropriate way. But、um, so my,、um, my answer refers more to urban populations and white collars、um, for whom, until the outbreak of the pandemic,、um, doing telework was almost unthinkable. So、um, there was an often imagined duality between um, um, being at the office, physically being at the office, and doing real work.、Um, so Even though there were,、um, with the, the outbreak of COVID 19,、um, so people got encouraged to do telework. And even though there were a lot of hesitations in the beginning,、um, <laughs> the more and more people seemed to enjoy it, actually.、Um, also, I could observe a correlation between working from home and generally taking more time for oneself.、Um, There's also the downside, of course,、um, such as domestic violence、um, that was increased or、um, isolation and solitude.、Um, but more、um, explicitly, as、um, an urban planner,、um, I would say, as in other countries also, it may make us think more about、um, or question more about how we live, where we live, and why we tend these days to、um, prefer to live in cities. Um, so, in Japan,、um, shrinking cities and rural exodus is a big issue.、Um, so, 
COVID-19 could in these regards actually have a long-term impact on people and society, I think. I understand you are also a photographer. How does that affect the way you approach your research subject? Um, well, so it's always, um, actually, it's, for me, it's like a part of my research. It's um, maybe the more abstract part of my research or the, the part which leads to more abstract outcomes. Um, so urban theories help me kind of to understand um, aspects of the city, which then I explore and express through photography. Um, in turn, photography makes me seek for the behind or the beyond. Um, and it also makes me question what I think I see or I know. So it's kind of like an investigation um, about my knowledge. Um, so in my photography, it's more like there are many elements in it, such as air, light. Um, there's also sounds or emotions, which I can put into, which maybe by writing um, are more complicated for me to express. Um, so what is interesting for me also is maybe my most expressive photographs I've, I've taken. They, although they're abstract, um, they actually were created at times that I was blocked in my research. So I kind of needed this, um, this way to express myself differently. And that helped me also to, to in the end, um, create not only artistic, but also scientific content. What was your research about specifically? Uh, so my research focuses on urban transformation in the context of the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Um, initially, I had planned to make a comparative study in between the two um, cities of the next summer games, so Tokyo and Paris. However, as um, the outbreak of COVID-19 led to the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Games, I reorientated my project and decided to focus entirely um, on the Japanese case. So this allows me to continue to follow the preparations in situ um, and also to include the handling of the postponement. Um, also, regardless um, if in fine the, the games um, is held or not, um, I analyzed the, long, um, the legacy and the possible long-term impact of the games on Tokyo. Fascinating. Please tell me more about it. Sure. So I became intrigued by the impact of the Olympic and Paralympic Games um, when I made an urban morphology of the neighborhood Kagurazaka in Tokyo between year 2015 and 2016. Um, Tokyo was elected host city on September 7, 2013 and was therefore back then in the first years of preparation. Um, during this survey, a survey uh, several residents expressed their fear of a local of a change of their the, the local character in their neighborhood. Um, in regards actually of a street widening project that was associated with the games. Um, although that specific project got never realized, um, it rose, arose my awareness. Um, about the impact of the Olympics on Tokyo and more generally the mega event on host cities. Um, so the Olympic and Paralympic Games imposing um, a limited and defined time frame are often seen for, um, as an opportunity to accelerate or even generate a, various, um, a variety of urban projects that can provoke significant transformations for their host territories. Um, so I'd like to talk today first about, um, give a bit um, of background knowledge about Tokyo and the games and the games being held in Tokyo. Um, then I'd like to talk about COVID-19 and how it led to an unprecedented postponement. Um, then I'll I'd like to make a short review about Tokyo during the year 2020. Um, and finally, before concluding, I'd like to um, share some thoughts and experiences um, about how it was and still is um, to do research dur during a pandemic and doing um, research about what I name a put on hold topic somehow. 
So in 1936, the Games of the um, 12th Olympiad scheduled for 1940 was assigned to Tokyo, which was an important step um, as before the Games had only been hosted by European countries or the United States. Though in summer 2000, in summer th uh, 1938, Japan cancelled them in reason of World War II. So it was finally in 1964 that the capital became the first host city in Asia. Um, in the run-up to the event, athletics facility as well as transport infrastructure got developed. Roads were rehabilitated and freshly built, great separated highways and expressways constructed. The Shinkansen, the bullet train, um, was integrated on October 1st, so nine days before the opening ceremony. But 19 64 was not only urbanistically but also symbolically a very important moment often called the rebirth of japan it was the occasion to show to the world the country's post-war recovery and modernization um, although the legacy of 1964 is still omnipresent the city of tokyo has significantly changed over the years and in japan where the average lifespan span of buildings is particularly short and where cities are in constant metamorphosis, um, the impact of the Olympic and Paralympic Games can nowadays be questioned. Um, if the capital's arrangements are less obvious than in the run-up to 1964, they're though not um, deniable. Um, from building new venues to implementing high security systems, um, from heat prevention measures um, to easily understandable signalization for foreign visitors, Tokyo had prepared and anticipated a wide range of scenarios. However, one specific had hardly even crossed one mi one's mind. It was the outbreak of a global pandemic. Only several months prior to the event, as the city was in its last preparations, COVID-19 started um, to progressively spread around the globe. As fear of the virus grew, um, countermeasures were taken and events widely cancelled or um, held without audience, rethinking the games became unavoidable. For a while, the International Olympic Com Committee, IOC, um, along with the Tokyo Organizing Committee and the Japanese government, affirmed that it was not considering a cancellation nor a postponement. Um, I have to say that I myself also held to that thought because after all, it's the Olympics. After all, it's an event which has been prepared over a period of um, seven years, excluding the candidature period. Um, and in history of the games of the modern era, on era only five Olympiads um, have been canceled, all to them due to war. It is not uncommon for the games to be exposed to external as well as internal threats. However, rescheduling the biggest sporting event in the world um, is exceptional and it engenders important economic, political and logistical challenges. Um, when on March 23rd, 2020, Canada and Australia, followed by other um, nations, sports federations, declared that they would not participate if the games were going as scheduled. Um, actions were taken within shortly. On the evening of March 24th, I went to observe the monthly gathering of the No Olymp Olympics moving, uh, movement, Hangori no Kai, um, who then mainly claimed the event to be completely cancelled. In Japan, one major argument of the opponents is that the money um, spent for the game should rather be invested in the reconstruction of disaster areas, and notably um, the areas affected by the tsunami and the nuclear disaster of 2011. So that evening, numerous controversial and quite naive thoughts, I, th I think, um, crossed my mind. Whilst listening to the opponents, I figured, if the games are cancelled, isn't it too late? The investments have, to most parts, already been made. Then my sight went over to the Tokyo 2020 countdown watch um, in front, installed in front of Tokyo Station. Looking at it, I wonder what would happen if the games were postponed or cancelled. 
with the watch just be reset, put on hold, shut down or moved away? As unimaginable it seemed as fast it happened. When I was on my way home, um, I received the news about the joint decision that the Tokyo 2020 Games would be postponed. So digits can easily be changed and the, the watches, the Omega watches got indeed rewarded the day after, um, showing the day, state and time just like any normal clock in the city um, for roughly one week before being set with a new countdown for the games, which are kept to be called Tokyo 2020, although rescheduled um, to summer 2021. So Tokyo's journey was extended, but as uh, such a situation is unprecedented, there's no guidebook or reference how to replan. An, or, an important part of the Tokyo organizing committee staff had been um, seconded from corporate sponsors and was meant to return to their um, companies after the games. Hotels needed to rebook thousands of visitors and various facilities had to change their agenda. Um, the freshly built Athlete Village, after serving for Tokyo 2020, is meant to become a new residential zone. So following the Games, it shall be um, converted and by 2024 count altogether over 5,500 units. Most are up for sale. Some first sales um, of apartments were launched from July to August 2019 and about 900 units already found purchasers. Um, the second round of sales was supposed to start in the end of March 2020, but it has been suspended. So last year, many cities have certainly looked um, unusual and widely are known. Um, images of typically really crowded um, yet suddenly deserted sceneries. Um, in January 2020, additionally to the privately installed permanent ones in front of the Japan um, Sport Olympic Square and the temporary exemplary displayed at Nihonbashi Bridge, um, really giant rings, um, Olympic rings were brought to Odaiba, Odaiba Marina Park. Public and private um, Buildings got progressively um, decorated with posters showing the Olympic emblems and mascots. And in February of the Olympic year, Tokyo 2020 flags um, were suspended on streetlights all over the city. The visual identity or look of the games is supposed to help um, a to, to build up, to raise a celebratory um, atmosphere for spectators. Right after the postponement of the games, the existence of all these um, symbols seemed particularly outstanding and almost haunting. Showcase children's drawings along the city's avenues um, felt joyless and the labeled products preposterous. Um, then there are the, the facilities almost perfectly prepared. In spring 2020, the stands of the temporary Ariaka Urban Sports Park, for example, in Tokyo's Koto Ward, were already installed, and even the white party tents were set. Um, on, on Friday, July 24, 2020, um, when the opening ceremony of the 32nd Olympiad um, should have been held, I imagined athletes, organizers, media, tens of thousands of spectators, though in reality, the evening uh, the same evening, only several reporters and cameramen gathered around the Japan National Stadium. By the end of 2020, of the year 2020, um, the Olympic symbols, still omnipresent, had practically faded in, in the background, trivial ca characteristics of Tokyo's urban landscape. So with the idea to stay from roughly one year before the Olympics, until short after the Paralympics, I arrived thanks to the um, support of the Japan Foundation in September 2019 in Tokyo. I had counted to advance uh, my project through three main axes, which is the study of literature, site visits and interviews. Though the pandemic impacted my research in two pivotal ways. One of them concerned my methodology and foreseen um, schedule, whereas the other altered the core of my project. Therefore, I found myself confronted not only with the fact 
that I needed to adapt my planning, but also that I had to con reconsider the theoretical framework of my research. Um, since one of my essential sources of, for scientific literature um, and also favorite workplaces, um, the National Diet Library closed in early spring um, over the outbreak of COVID-19. I mainly advanced my reading through online articles and press releases. Um, I continued the observation of venues. However, my visits to elementary schools um, in Tokyo's Koto ward, ward um, which allowed me to witness the implementation of the Olympic education program and to hear about children's perception of changes in their lived environment, had to be suspended from March 2020 on when schools nationwide um, were closed. At their reopening, countermeasures were more resultant and the general excitement towards the Olympics um, rather relu reluctant. Um, various festivities such as the inauguration of venues, milestone events and others were due to the pandemic as well um, as to the postponement, either cancelled or adjourned. Practically um, the entirety of academic activities were stopped or carried out and online and although I tried to um, conduct interviews as foreseen, due to the fact that Tokyo 2020 was postponed, mo most of my interlocutors were um, really cautious not only to meet but also to talk. So for a while um, I though stubbornly, almost stubbornly, um, continued my research and published reports. At some point though I had to realize that I found myself in a similar situation to the venues, the Tokyo 2020 flags or posters, or again the festival tents at the prior mentioned um, Ariaka Urban Sports Park. Somehow I was remaining here, calmly awaiting for what was happening. The closer the games had come, the more the dim dynamic had grown. And suddenly there was like a vacuum. It was like a blank space um, in my agenda at a, um, a period which was supposed to be filled with appointments, with um, human exchange and interaction. This um, emptiness was particularly palpable in summer 2020. So when on August 9th in the evening, around the time that the closing ceremony of the 2020 Olympics should have taken place, I found myself alone a curious sentimentality, yet also an excitement and a fascination, and a particular feeling um, of attachment to my research um, overcame me, because somehow I was not completely alone. I was in the exclusive company of the Japan National Stadium, the Olympic rings, and the statue of Pierre de Coubertin. So in the resumption of the Olympic Games of Antiquity in the modern form, um, founder Pierre de Coubertin saw the possibility for humanity to benefit from the fruits of various cultures while waiting to be united in a world civilization. He believed that sports were a way uh, to join national pride with international understanding. During times that countries want to globe close their borders and people are requested to refrain from gathering together, it however seems that quite much goes against these ideals. Japan aimed to attract 40 million visitors in the Olympic years, year, yet the number of foreign travelers has dropped in 2020 on a monthly average by over 85% um, compared to 2019. So materialistic, materialistically speaking, Tokyo was practically set to host the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Though through the outbreak of COVID-19, its agenda was unwittingly changed. Tokyo 2020 illustrates the precariousness between planning a long-term e uh, mega event, the implementation of precise projects, and the unpredictable, which puts to the proof the tolerance for ambiguity of each of the involved persons. I thank you very much for listening to me. How <laughs> ポストコロナ世界における分断と交流 
ナビゲーターのサルローズがお送りいたしましたまたお会いしましょうねバイバイ